staying on target. The Secretary of Defense touring military sites in San Diego today. His message on national security for the battles happening now and in the future. It looks smart. When I drive by and I see solar systems, I think these are smart people. Keeping up with the Joneses, the bright innovation becoming a staple in San Diego homes and how it's changing the game for modern architecture. Locals, stand by. Imagine all the people. The musical lesson for San Diego students inspired by a legendary rocker. KPBS Evening Edition starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Maya Trabolsi. Crime rates are up in San Diego for the first time since 2012. The overall rate last year rose 8.5%, thefts jumped 13%, and aggravated assaults were up 3%. San Diego Police Chief Shelley Zimmerman says her department takes the increases seriously but keeps those numbers in perspective. And although it did increase in, in 2015 compared to 2014, we have to keep in mind in year 2014 experienced the lowest overall crime in 46 years. So we are still at very much historic lows. Zimmerman also says thefts were responsible for 80 percent of the crime rate increase last year. She presented the crime report to a city council committee this afternoon and asked them to continue providing her with resources required to hire new employees to help the department overcome sworn and civilian staffing shortages. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter arrived in San Diego. He met with sailors and Marines and talked to reporters. He visited Naval Base San Diego, then traveled to visit the Marines at MCAS Miramar. KPBS reporter Steve Walsh has the story. Behind me we have an array of aircraft that the Marines here at Miramar want Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter to see. Ashton Carter just unveiled a $583 billion budget, perhaps the only budget that he will uh, have during his tenure as Secretary of Defense. Here's what he had to say. So at the same time, you have to be ready for today's fights. We're all trying, to, also trying to make you and the rest of the force ready for tomorrow's possible fights. That includes high-end potential competitors, including countries we don't want to have a war with, but deterrence is important. That includes countries like China and Russia that have very, spend a lot on their militaries and uh, with which we have uh, a sometimes competitive relationship and we need to be ready and make it clear to them and anybody else who might come along in the future that if you tangle with the United States, probably better not to do that in the first place. Uh, and if you do, you'll regret it. That kind Though of... The proposed budget includes several boosts in spending for high-tech items. Uh, they're also looking at cutbacks, including the littoral combat ship, which is already stationed here in San Diego, and also the they're looking at how fast to roll out the F-35, which is already stationed up here at Miramar. From Miramar, I'm Steve Walsh, KVVS News. For the first time this flu season, someone under the age of 65 has died from flu-related causes. San Diego County health officials say the man did not have a pre-existing medical condition and contracted the H1N1 strain of the virus. Despite this death, this season has been much milder than last year. Five people have died from flu, season, flu this season. At this time last year, 38 people had died. And San Diego County received miserable grades in the latest tobacco control report card from the American Lung Association. From our North County Bureau, KPBS health reporter Kenny Goldberg tells us most local cities got D's and F's. The Lung Association report grades each city and county overall and on its policies in various categories. These include smoke-free outdoor air and reducing sales of tobacco products. Only four local cities earned an overall grade above a D. The Lung Association's Deborah Kelly says El Cajon really stood out. They have passed very strong smoke-free outdoor air policies, including making their sidewalks smoke-free. They have an excellent tobacco retail licensing law that has reduced their tobacco sales to kids to practically zero. In addition, El Cajon is the only city in the region that limits smoking in multifamily housing. 
more than half of the cities in the county have passed restrictions on e-cigarettes. Kenny Goldberg, KPBS News. A California lawmaker is pushing to restructure the Public Utilities Commission. The Public Utilities Reform Act would change the CPUC's role as a regulator in light of recent gas leaks impacting thousands of state residents. The measure calls for California voters to repeal a constitutional mandate giving the CPUC authority to allow existing agencies to hold utility companies more accountable when there are emergencies. You have this, this huge agency that is tasked with most but not all things involving utilities and common carriers, but then you have an alphabet soup of other agencies and other officials who have some sort of regulatory uh, authority. And I think this proposal would make it clear we want to hold utilities accountable and we want to make sure that the regulatory regime in California is a lot better, uh, serves the people in a lot better fashion. The legislature has made attempts to reform the CPUC in the past, but the governor vetoed those attempts. He made a pledge last month in his State of the City address. Today, Mayor Kevin Faulkner kicked off a collaborative campaign aimed at getting 1,000 homeless veterans off the streets by this time next year. It's an effort to address one of San Diego's most serious problems. With $12.5 million in federal, city, and San Diego Housing Commission resources, the Housing Our Heroes initiative was launched with a deadline of this year to house 1,000 homeless veterans. It marks the fourth new initiative of Housing First San Diego, which is the San Diego Housing Commission's landmark homeless action plan that first launched in 2014. Mayor Faulkner says the challenges are complicated because many veterans suffer from mental health or substance abuse issues. That's why this campaign is not just about putting a roof over their heads. That approach hasn't worked, so we're doing things differently. It's about providing the supportive services that they need to help turn their lives around. There are four main components of the campaign, which include providing incentives for landlords who rent to homeless veterans, covering security deposits and move-in costs to get veterans housed quickly, providing housing vouchers from the Federal Veterans Affairs Supporting Housing Program, and providing supportive services such as counseling and job training. We're going to do it because it's the right thing to do. We're going to do it because we're united here in San Diego. We're going to do it because we are here to help out. We're here to say thank you to the men and women that have served our country. And funding approval for the Housing Our Heroes initiative will go before the San Diego Housing Commission on February 12th. Thereafter, it will need that final approval from the City Council in March. Plans for a Christian theme park in Mission Valley are no closer to becoming a reality. That's after the neighborhood planning group punted a decision on whether to recommend approval. Morris Cerullo is a Pentecostal preacher based in San Diego, and he wants to tear down the Mission Valley Resort Hotel and build a legacy center with timeshares, religious attractions, and a missionary training center. The Mission Valley planning group got a presentation today from the project's architect, Mike Hera. Members said that they didn't fully address the project's environmental and traffic impacts and asked him to return with more details. President Barack Obama is encouraging Americans to stand against Islamophobia. The president spoke at the Islamic Society of Baltimore today to push back against prejudice that Muslim Americans say is on the rise following terrorist attacks in Paris and California. We're one American family, and when any part of our family starts to feel separate or second class or targeted, it tears at the very fabric of our nation. The visit was his first as president to an American mosque. The IRS says it's having trouble with some of its computer systems, so it stopped taking electronically filed tax returns today. The agency says it's a hardware problem affecting the e-file system and the refund tracking system. They say some systems will stay out of service until at least tomorrow. Some California lawmakers say the state should provide recruiting, mentoring, and financial help to prospective teachers as ways to address a sudden need among school districts. Tens of thousands of teachers lost their jobs during the recession, and many aren't returning, even though district budgets have grown and schools have more jobs available. Three Democratic senators are putting forth a package of bills this year. It includes a measure that would forgive student loans for teachers who spend at least four years in schools or subjects with the most severe shortages. 
The California Medical Association is throwing its support behind a ballot initiative to legalize recreational marijuana use. The state's largest physicians organization announced its endorsement of the measure this week, even though they refuse to support smoking in any form. Increasingly, marijuana is not about smoking. Uh, in fact, a majority of marijuana in states that have a legalized regulated system, uh, marijuana is being consumed through ways other than smoking. And the group says regulated legalization, similar to alcohol, will allow doctors to more freely study the drug's medical effects. Critics say it could lead to a bloated and powerful marijuana industry similar to that of big tobacco. Proponents of the Adult Use of Marijuana Act have until June 5th to collect the approximately 366,000 signatures needed to qualify the measure for the November 2016 ballot. Meantime, Governor Jerry Brown signed an emergency bill today that eliminates an upcoming deadline local governments face to ban or regulate medical marijuana cultivation. The author of the bill says the deadline made it into the regulations by mistake and that local officials now can take time to consider the issue. With the big game just around the corner, the Federal Aviation Administration is asking fans to leave their drones at home during the Super Bowl. This is an ad informing that the Levi Stadium will be a no drone zone during the game. The, the restrictions will be in effect within a 32 mile radius of the stadium from 2 p.m. until midnight on Sunday. And it was a mild winter day in San Diego. Molly Cochran has more in tonight's KPBS weather report. Well, it's been a dry past couple days in San Diego County, and it looks like the immediate future really going to stay that way. Now, here's a look at our satellite radar over the past six hours. The next storm system uh, moving into northern California could potentially cause for a few flight delays in San Francisco due to the low cloud ceilings, also expecting some showers for the overnight hours. But the northern pattern uh, for some of these storms is really going to continue. I've taken a look at some of the mo models well into next week and it really looks like Southern California going to be enjoying the sunshine uh, over an extended period of time. So here's a look back home. We can see uh, nothing but smooth sailing and dry skies along the immediate coastline. The interior sections also included in this. It was a pretty chilly start to our day, but temperatures are going to be warming up as we head into the next couple days. Now here's a look for tonight. Our overnight lows going to be staying a few degrees below average for this time of year still, but as we head towards the weekend, things are really going to start to heat up. We'll be under dry skies across the majority of the viewing area and here's a closer look of what's to come for Thursday. So what we're going to start to see happen is the jet stream lift farther off to the north and that's really going to send any of those storms northward as well and that's leading to a lot of sunshine building in and also the warmer air going to be filtering into California. Las Vegas also into Phoenix, LA back towards San Diego. It's just going to be feeling pretty nice over the next couple days. So let's have a closer look here this time of year we should still be right around 65 degrees in San Diego our overnight low right around 50 for this time of year well I can tell you we're going to be warmer than that as we head into the upcoming weekend especially along the immediate coastline Saturday just uh, I hope you can get outside and enjoy yourself beautiful weather and temperatures in the mid 70s we really can't ask for much nicer conditions across the region across the interior sections also expecting that gradual warm-up Friday afternoon bright and sunny probably going to be racing out of work early to enjoy yourself temperatures in the overnight Saturday night really not too far off from where we should be for this time of year in the lower 50s however our daytime high gets to about 73 and we should be in the mid 70s for Sunday and Monday and we can see bright sunny skies here to stay across the mountainous regions we're at 49 on Friday upper 50s for Saturday getting into the 60s by Sunday so also tapping into the warmth and also the dry weather also the desertous regions going to be quite mild by the time we head into Monday we're going to be right around the 80 mark with sunshine remaining Molly Cochran KPBS News A state agency is spending $1.7 million to fight the voracious bark beetle, an insect that continues to decimate California's tree population. So far, 58 million trees have been damaged by the insect, and 28 million of those trees have already died. It's spreads. You know, we, we have to 
we have to try and get on top of there's some significant decision that needs to be made now is that do we treat the stuff that's already dead or do we treat the stuff that's distressed so we can stop the spread and the funds will be divided between central valley and southern california counties governor brown declared a state of emergency for the dead and dying trees late last year as the price of solar panels goes down, you see more and more conventional homes mounting solar panels on rooftops. KPBS editor Tom Fudge says modern architecture is beginning to create buildings that are built for a green footprint. This house is owned by Fenella Arnold, and it has 18 solar panels, which she had installed in November, and she's totally into it. It looks like it peaks. It peaks at a certain time, doesn't it? It does. It definitely peaks at a certain time. I geek out on the monitoring of it. I like to sit there. I can see it on my phone if I want to, but I can also look on the computer, and I can actually watch what they're doing. I can watch as a cloud passes by and the energy production goes down. Arnold's solar array costs $16,800, minus a 30% federal tax credit. It is also very clearly seen from the front of her house. Is this what a realtor would call curb appeal? I love it. I mean, to me, and I, I think this with everybody's solar system, it looks smart. When I drive by and I see solar systems, I think these are smart people. The neighborhood she lives in is El Cerrito. It's also my neighborhood, and to say that solar energy has taken off here lately is an understatement. Tax credits, subsidized manufacture of solar panels in China, they've made solar much more affordable. The people I spoke to said they expect to pay off their investment in six to ten years. Robert Gill is another resident for whom solar made financial sense. He's a neighbor who lives four doors down from me. That dotted left pointing arrow on his electric meter shows the meter spinning backwards, meaning he's receiving energy credits from the power company. But there's one place Gill does not have solar panels, the sunny south-facing front of the house, which faces the street. He didn't think that would look very smart. We didn't want to really mess with the character of the house and have panels put on the south-facing side, so all of our panels are in the back. Gil is really into his house. He knows its history. He knows who built it, and it wasn't built to have glass panels in front. The aesthetic effect of solar energy is one potential downside of retrofitting a home with an energy source that seems very green and nowadays cost-effective. You also have to consider the weight of those panels on a house. The reduction in their energy output over time. And by the way, where will all those old PVC panels be thrown away when you're done with them? Now, keep in mind, there are some buildings with solar power that have not been retrofitted. The new restaurant Costera on San Diego Bay was built for solar energy from the beginning. Don Mitrovich is a professor at the New School of Architecture and Design. He points out that solar energy at Costera was not an afterthought. As the canopy for the restaurant, it keeps the sun and the rain off the patrons. It also, according to the restaurant, provides more than a third of the building's energy needs. Two of Mitrovich's students have designed homes with solar in mind. This one is the project of third-year student Ricardo Uribe, who has made the solar panels the roof of his carport. He says solar panels are not what he considers to be attractive. It can be, but most of the time it's not, mainly because it's an added feature that they just throw it on in the end. They don't try to integrate it. That's why I integrated mine in, into my carport. The push for clean energy comes down to the challenge of stopping climate change. The city of San Diego has responded by passing a climate action plan that requires 100% clean energy by 2035. Nicole Capritz, the co-author of the climate action plan, says solar will have to be a big part of that. So what we would like to see is rooftop solar and parking lot solar on city buildings, on schools, um, on parking lots, in, on commercial buildings, and on private homes. Really, what we want to see is that you, there are very few parts of the city that you would go and turn your head and you would not see solar panels. What Ricardo Uribe would rather see is not panels, but buildings that were made for solar, with solar film embedded in windows, solar power that's part of a wall or a roof. Yeah, well, I guess we're the future architects, so from now on, we're the ones that have to step up and uh, change, change the rest of the game of how we design buildings. Tom Fudge, KPBS News. And KPBS video journalist Nick McVicker helped produce that report. A Pacific Northwest sanctuary made headlines recently thanks to an anti-government movement. 
but it's not the first time. EarthFix producer Jess Burns shows the clash between fashion and conservation that created a wildlife refuge. Before there was an armed occupation of the Malheur Wildlife Refuge in Eastern Oregon, before there was Ammon Bundy demanding that federal lands be handed over to locals, before Teddy Roosevelt created any national wildlife refuges at all, there were hats. Elaborate feathered hats worn by women. Women caught up in a fashion craze that was sweeping Europe and the United States in the late 1800s. To feed the haute couture appetites of the upper classes, so-called plume hunters were crossing the country, killing millions upon millions of birds for their feathers. In 1898, the plume hunters found Malheur Lake. According to photographer William Finley, a pair of hunters wiped out the population of white herons or egrets in just a day and a half. Malheur has seen many such massacres, but none so great as that. Ten years later, when Finley explored the Malheur marshes, the egrets were still gone. I am satisfied that of the thousands of white herons formerly nesting on Malheur, not a single pair of birds is left. In response to the devastation he found, Finley helped to establish what is now the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. More than a century later, the 300 square mile refuge is one of the most important migratory bird sites in North America. 320 different species of birds pass through the refuge each year, and the white heron is back. In fall and winter, hunting is still allowed, but highly regulated. Hundreds of hunters visit the refuge each year in search of pheasant and other game birds. But most people just come to look and take photos like William Finley did in 1908. In a strange way, the histories of Finley and the Bundy clan have become intertwined. Both made stands at the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge, though for very different reasons. But by choosing this small corner of eastern Oregon, they're both now part of the same story that begins with the tyranny of women's hats. And reporting by Jess Burns of EarthFix, an environmental reporting project made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. A controversial connection to El Chapo has prompted a Mexican actress to seek legal protection. Kate Del Castillo filed a court petition today. She wants an injunction against any arrest re related to Mexico's investigation of her relationship with detained drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. She arranged a meeting between the drug boss and actor Sean Penn in October. Last month, Mexico's attorney general and officials are investigating possible money laundering involving Guzman and the actress's tequila business. A judge told her lawyer, a judge told her lawyers rather, to specify more clearly the grounds on which they were seeking the injunction. Del Castillo's representatives have not responded to repeated requests for comment. The subject of the popular podcast, Serial, returned to court today to argue that he deserves a new chance at freedom. Adnan Syed was convicted in the 1999 murder of his high school girlfriend, but the blockbuster podcast raised questions about the fairness of his trial, and it helped prompt a Maryland appeals court to grant a hearing on the possibility of a new one. The family of victim Ha Min Lee issued a statement today saying they believe justice was done when Syed was convicted in 2000. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour, the rise of right wing extremism in Sweden after the country took in more than 160,000 refugees last year. That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. John Lennon's musical legacy made a stop in San Diego. KPBS education reporter Matt Bowler caught up with the John Lennon educational bus tour at Crown Point Junior Music Academy. With that song, the kids at Crown Point Junior Music Academy became one of six to get a visit from the John Lennon Educational Bus. The bus is a multi-million dollar recording studio on wheels. For nearly 20 years, the late former Beatles bus has toured the country promoting music education. This year, six schools or districts will receive a one-day residency on the bus to record a song and make a video.
The National Association of Music Education says music education can improve learning in many ways, including test scores. Eric Ebel from the National Association of Music Merchants says music can do even more than improve test scores. You know, for the rest of their lives, they, they're well-rounded citizens, and that's what we want. That's what we need, and, uh, and that's the mission of the NAM Foundation. And it's fun. And it's fun. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? Right. Vocals, stand by. Getting smart and having fun. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Matt Buller, KPBS News. And here's a look at what we're working on for tomorrow in the KPBS newsroom. On Morning Edition, Secretary of State Alex Padilla visits San Diego State. How he's trying to get out the vote. And on Midday Edition, a new vision for the San Diego County Taxpayers Association. That's tomorrow on KPBS Radio. And you can find tonight's stories on our website. That's kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening. Good night.